All right, good afternoon, everyone. Today is November 5th, 2012. Um, it's Monday, the day before the presidential election. Um, with that in mind, I kind of anticipated that the start of the morning was going to be a little choppy, and it was. Um, let me just go over the results that I have first. The results that I did in the live trading room, I took a couple of crude oil trades, ended up plus two ticks. I took a gold trade and ended up plus five ticks. And... Dwayne had the charts for a little while in the live trading room, and he put on a um, he put on an S and P trade, an ES an ES trade, and he lost two points on that one. Okay, those were the results for today. Um, now, if you have not taken a free trial with us, go to www.cfrn.net forward slash apply and sign up. All we need is your name and your email address, and we'll send you an email with a link with many links, actually. <laughs> One is to a video that shows you how to download the platform, download the indicators, and then all you have to do is uh, apply. Um, you, also get, um, <clears throat> you also get time in our live trading room, two hours per day for five business days in our live trading room, where you can see all this stuff in action, and you can ask all the questions you want before making a decision to become a partner. Um, right, that's it. CFRN.net forward slash apply. Um, for everybody that's out there that is a partner, our partners meeting this week is going to be Wednesday night instead of Thursday night. All right, Wednesday night instead of Thursday night. Um, Wednesday night at 9 p.m., okay? All right, um, let me blow up the ES right here so you can get a better look at the, the mess that it was today. All right, it opened up right in here, and that's when I drew these blue lines on here. And I said, I want to see price get up above these lines or down below these lines. Um, you know, up above this line or down below this line before I take a trade on the ES. Um, it took it a while to get up above there. It got up, it got up above it right over here. And then I had said, well, you know, I want to see this was not really convincing. And I said, well, I want to see something up above this. And there it was right there. So I had an order on right here. Dwayne also had his order on right there. When this was coming together for me... Um, once we had put in this higher swing right here, I took my order off. Dwayne left his order on. Um, for me, because this bar right here hadn't filled me and it had put in a higher swing, um, I did not want to trade this. I wanted to see it close on the other side of this trend line before I traded it. All right. Now, there's a couple of problems with the way that this developed afterward. But Dwayne had left his order on, and he got filled, and then he went and did something, and he came back, and he had stopped out. That's that's trading. Um, I had taken my order off, so I did not get filled on that. This is this is my ES DOM for the morning. Nothing. Um, and this is my crude DOM, plus two ticks, and my gold DOM, plus five ticks. That is what I traded this morning. Um, now... The way that everything came together here, it consolidated, gosh, my cursor's a little slow here. It consolidated in all this period right here. Then it had to move up to this level, which was the Globex high. Um, it consolidated some more. Then it moved down to this level and consolidated some more. Now, when you see this blue thing right here, um, <laughs> when you see this blue thing right here, and um, and it didn't... And it didn't move up off of that. It didn't put in a higher swing. It suggests that it's not going to hold in this level right here either. Okay. Now what we have going on here is actually a bearish cross and a pullback up and test to the BBC where we could have actually shorted the trade right here. We could have shorted it from here down. Okay. The trend line would be... Well, there's not really any place to draw a trend line right in here because it's really consolidating. Um, so I didn't take any trades on the ES this morning. Dwayne took one. Now the YM... Look just like the ES. It looked just like it. Um, here it is right here. See that? What a mess. Um, I didn't take any YM trades either. On the NQ, there were some trades that set up this morning. Now, I didn't trade the NQ because the ES was so messy. The ES and the YM were so messy. So I just stayed away from the NQ as well. But there were trades that set up on the NQ. Um, we had some bearish divergence right in here. Well, let's start right with the open. Okay, here's 932. We had a bullish cross. Um, in here, we had a test of the BBC and an up close. If you took that, it didn't work out at all. All right, it pulled down here to the blue area right here, which coming off a higher high, you could have taken. Um, 
So there's a couple of trades right in there. There's one right there. No, and for me, if I were trading the NQ at that time, which I wasn't, but if I were, um, I would have gotten stopped out on that. All right, I would have taken it, and I would have gotten stopped out. Um, this one over here is another opportunity right here. You could have bought right off of this coming off a higher high and expected it to get up to this prior swing, which is exactly what it did. Not putting in a higher high there, you wouldn't anticipate that it's going to hold in here. All right, then it all reversed, and it started headed down. It started heading down. Um, it pulled up in here. There was no trade here off the BBC because the cycle was headed up. All right, it went right up to the yellow line right here. And you could have shorted that yellow line coming off a lower swing. You could have shorted right in there for the move down. Now, what I'm showing you right here on the NQ is the same stuff. It's exactly the same across all the four tick range charts. Okay, across all the four tick range charts, it's exactly the same. Um, when it pulled up here to this red area, it gave one full bar down, which is what you would anticipate. Then it, it moved back up, um, so you stopped out at break even on that one probably. Um, the next area right over here, it didn't actually hit the BBC. I remember saying that it didn't actually hit the BBC right there, so there was no entry. But you did have bullish divergence down here in the bottom. Um, you put in a higher swing, higher than this one, higher swing. So you would anticipate that the blue is going to hold right here. It didn't put in a higher swing there, so you would anticipate that this one is going to fail. And it did. Give you a shorting opportunity right there. Um, that's pretty much it. We didn't put in a lower swing off of this red here or this one here. You would anticipate that this isn't going to hold. Um, it went through it a little bit, bumped it back down. It got pretty choppy right in here, and I wasn't trading the NQ at all. But... If you you know if you just follow it along, it's more of the same. You had bullish divergence to test to the BBC with an up close for an opportunity there. On this one right here, the cycle's headed down in red, so I wouldn't have been taking that. Over here, you had a bearish cross with some bearish divergence. This is one of those opportunities, and I'll show you right here. Oops. Um, where the heck was that? It was just right here. This right here is one of those opportunities where you're you're coming off of a red area and it's uh, down close after pullback and test of the BBC with bearish divergence. So those tend to work out pretty well. All right, that one worked. Um, over here, it, it didn't pull all the way back down to the, uh, to the yellow brick road over here. Um, and pretty much all of these pullbacks, if they did hit the BBC, the cycle was against it. So it was sort of resetting right in there. All right, right in here where it pulled back up. To the BBC right here, we didn't have, um, I guess we did have some divergence, but it didn't actually hit the BBC. By the time you got the down close, was off of this. And this is another one of those cases that I just described a second ago, where it's off the red area right here, and it's also off the BBC with some bearish divergence, and that worked out again. Um, this one, the divergence is going the wrong way. So that was pretty much it on the NQ. So that's the ES, the YM, the NQ. On the soybeans, I haven't been watching the soybeans at all, but earlier on, earlier on, I put some levels on there that I would I would look for prices to get through, and it hasn't gotten through them. You see these blue lines right here; those are the prices, and we have not gotten through any of them. I didn't look at the six E at all this morning. Okay, not even a little bit. I didn't look at the six E, so I'm not going to go through that. Um, gold. I'll show you what we did on gold. This was the one trade we took here off of the uh, off the yellow brick road right here. All right, it came up, it tested it after putting it a lower low. I got short off of the uh, off of the YBR right there, and I took profit down here at the MA1. Okay, there were a few more opportunities here on the gold this morning. Um, you can see I have some of them highlighted in here, but it's all the same across all these four tick range charts, guys. It's all the same. You're doing the same exact thing. You're looking for a bullish cross, it tested the BBC, and up close with bullish divergence. Um, let me say that again slower. You're looking for a bullish cross, pull away, and then a test of the BBC, which is the green line. Bullish divergence, and an up close. Right there. Okay. Same thing over and over and over again. If it goes through the BBC, and it's coming off a higher high, then you're looking for a blue area on the YVR that you could buy it there. Okay, and anticipate that it's going to move up to the prior swing, through the prior swing, actually, to set up for the next trade. But you could buy it there, all right, like this one here just did. 
Um, that's that's pretty much it on the uh, on the gold. All right, I'll show you uh, crude oil. The Russell actually had a pretty good morning too. Let me let me show you the Russell. There were some trades on the Russell this morning. Um, let's see here after the right at the open, it dropped down here, um, hit the blue line right here, or the yellow line that turned blue, off a higher swing for a move up. Okay, anticipating a larger move up to the weekly trading zone, which is right up above it, and it did hit that zone. All right, you got your bearish cross here. You pull back up, test to the BBC and bearish divergence right there you see that opportunity on the short side same thing right here you have your test of the BBC your down close and your bearish divergence All right. on this one right here by the time it closed down the cycle was moving up you're losing your divergence okay I did point out in here that you could short this because you're coming off a lower low if you did short it it worked its way down to here All right, where you had bullish divergence and you could have actually bought that so you could have shorted it from here down to here and bought it from here up to here. Okay. Um, I think I left alone I left it alone the rest of the morning after that. And there was one of the point over here that I had pointed out that it had uh, come down, hit the BBC with bullish divergence and given an up close. Okay. That was the Russell this morning. Now you may look at this one right here and say, well what about this? It came back down, hit the BBC. Um the cycle was going right against it here. Okay. Uh, that was that. Now let me bring over the crude oil. And we will be done with our recap. Um, let me minimize the crude. Now I took a couple of trades on crude. I got a couple of ticks out of one and a break even out of the other one. It's all the same stuff though, guys, because it's a four tick range chart. All right four tick range chart. So I got the bullish cross to pull away the test of the BBC. You could have gotten long in here or right here. I didn't do either one. I, <laughs> I missed both of those and I got long over here once we had the bullish you know, the bullish cross and uh, higher swing. Pulled back down, tested the BBC and gave an up close with the bullish divergence down here on the bottom. Okay, right there. So I got long right in there. And it went all the way up here. I actually moved the profit target up to here at the top after it had already hit it. And then I moved my stop to plus a couple ticks. So it had just a small range in there where it was going to take me out with a profit no matter what. And it took me out with a small profit. All right, We didn't put in a higher swing, so we didn't anticipate this working. It did, but we didn't anticipate it. Um, the next thing was a bearish cross. It tested the BBC with a down close. I got short on that with the bearish divergence here. Okay, And I was anticipating that it was going to get down here, but it didn't. It got within a couple of ticks of it, and then it turned around and went up. Um, now over here you had a bullish cross test of the BBC with an up close right there on that dragonfly doji with bullish divergence if you got long on that you had to endure the drawdown to this period right here this spot right here um, and it moved up off of that okay off the higher high right here we didn't have any bullish divergence here so we couldn't take the up close but you could take the bounce right here off the higher high and that moved it all the way up to there okay um, you had a bearish cross, pull back and test to the BBC. Now, right in here, the cycle was going up too far to take that short. Um, in this in this case right here, a close down below the MA1 should bring you down here to the swing. And that's what happened. All right, and that brings us into the break. So that, my friends, was the trading for the morning today. Um, if anybody has any questions about anything, email us at support at cfrn.net. That is support at cfrn.net. Um, let me see what else. What else can we do? Hey, Ray, you're out there. I see that. Um, all right. I don't see any more questions coming in here. Um, so I am going to wrap up the recording right here.